What's up guys, Mati here. So in the last episode, we saw how we can use ksql db and how it's really simple to install and the very first SQL syntax that we created and so on. And today we're going to see another component that comes with ksql db, which is Kafka Connect, which is a different application, but you can combine them together so that you can create the most amazing data streaming applications with just a few SQL commands. So welcome to Programming with Mati. So let's start with the overview of Kafka Connect in KSQL DB. But first, what is Kafka Connect? It's an open source tool to create connectors that can move data in and out of Kafka into external databases. And why do we use it? Because we don't want to create a new application that will consume from a Kafka topic and put it into a MySQL database. That component is uh, already created. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we reuse these connectors that have been developed by someone else and we use it in our applications. The latest versions of uh, KSQL DB are integrated with Kafka Connect and they can run an embed server of Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect is a different application and it runs in its own process, but the latest versions of KSQL DB have been uh, done in a way that both applications, KSQL DB and Kafka Connect can run in the same uh, container, but with different processes. You can basically run KSQL DB and Kafka Connect in the same container as an embed mode. And the second option right here is to run it as an external application. So you can have ksql db on one server you can have kafka connect in a different server and you can connect them and uh, this is very useful when you already had a kafka connect instance uh, running or because you want to scale them differently let's say you want to scale kafka connect more than what you scale ksql db or vice versa then you can run them as separate applications and then you'll have more flexibility about scaling and where you deploy them and so on and so on. And the cool thing about KSQL DB is that it allows you to create connectors using the KSQL DB uh, SQL syntax. So it's really easy to create connectors from KSQL DB. So you can manage all your connectors from a centralized place and KSQL DB becomes the place where you can run all your streaming applications. Let's let's take a look at some of the main concepts of Kafka Connect. The first concept we need to look at is the concept of connectors. What are connectors? They are basically a piece of software that was developed by someone else that allows you to connect to and from some data sources. So you basically have two types of connectors. You have the sync connectors and the source connectors. The source connectors are used to connect from the external database or application into Apache Kafka and the sync connectors are used to move data from Kafka into the external source. These connectors can be created by you or there are already a lot of connectors that are available in the internet that were created by people and most of them are open source. Some of them are not, so you have to be careful in which one you want to use, but a lot of them are open source, so you can use them uh, for your applications. And uh, these connectors allow you to, for example, put data from MySQL into Kafka or from Kafka to Redis and so on and so on. And we are going to do a very interesting example about this. Then we have tasks and tasks are basically units of work. The number of tasks is configurable and it allows you to control how much work a single worker will do. And what is a worker? Yeah, a worker is an instance of a Connect application. So if you have an instance of Kafka Connect, then you have a worker. And you can have as many workers as you as you want and, and you can uh, basically combine them to get more capacity and that is called a connect cluster which is the concept right here which is 
basically many workers working together as a group, moving data in and out of Kafka. And the last concept that we want to see is the converters, which are pieces of code that transform data from the format that the external system has into the format of Apache Kafka. Uh, and there are many converters. For example, you, you have JSON converter, you have Avro converter, you have protobuf converter, and then you have some native types as well. You can convert it into uh, strings or integers or whatever format you want. Let's talk about the architecture and the deployment of Kafka Connect and KSQL. So this is a Connect cluster. As you see, this cluster will have three workers, one, two, and three, and each worker will have source connectors and sync connectors. Well, not, not necessarily. It can have only a source connector. It can only have a sync connector. It depends on what you want to do. But this worker in particular has a source connector and a sync connector. And then you have the source system and the sync system. And every time there is a read and a write operation, those are tasks that we are doing in the worker. And this read operation here is reading from the source system and transforming it into a format that Apache Kafka will be able to understand. And then we read from Kafka, the sync connector will read it and then write it into the sync system. And on the other hand, we have KSQL, which is a different application, as we said before. And this can read and write. So the full the full circle becomes when you read from the source system, you put it into Kafka, then you process it in KSQL with some streaming logic, then you write it back to Kafka, and then you read from Kafka and put it into a sync system. And that is the full circle. So let's go ahead and work in our tutorial because I want to introduce all these concepts with the tutorial. And this is going to be just an introductory tutorial for the combination of KSQL and Kafka Connect because we're going to be doing much more with these two tools. So I wanted to introduce it first so that then we can uh, use it and go deeper into the different concepts. So in our tutorial, we will have a MySQL database, and this MySQL database will have a table that will have different players, different football players from different countries and teams. So we will read this table with our JDBC connector that we are going to install in our Kafka Connect instance, and this is going to be written into the players topic. This players topic then will be read by our Redis sync connector and it will send the data into Redis. And we are going to be creating the connectors with KSQL DB. So we are not going to create we're we're not going to configure the connectors with um, the REST API that Kafka Connect has. We will use KSQL DB to create the connectors. And we will also have deployed the schema registry because we will be using a format for sending the data, which is Abro, which is a format uh, very, very used in, in the Apache Kafka world. So we'll use this. Uh, you don't have to pay attention a lot to this for now. We'll explain in future tutorials why do we use this. But the idea is basically we're going to take the players from here, we're going to put them here, then read them, and then uh, we're going to be able to see the players stored into Redis. So let's jump into the code. All right, so I have the tutorial here that I created for this. Uh, the tutorial is in GitHub, so you'll be able to download it as always, and you'll be able to follow along. So this tutorial is called KSQL Connect Tutorial, and it has a readme file where I explain everything that we're going to do. So basically, 
uh, we're going to be running locally Zookeeper and Kafka as always. Then we'll run a KSQL DB server with Kafka Connect embed. And we also run a KSQL DB client. We'll have the schema registry, MySQL, and Redis. Everything will be run using a Docker Compose file, which is here. This is a Docker Compose and has all the services here declared. Let's take a look at how we are configuring KSQL DB and Kafka Connect. So because we're running Kafka Connect, we'll have to consider a couple of things for this deployment. We need to install the connectors that are required for the components. So we need the JDBC connector for MySQL and we need the Redis sync connector for Redis. We also need to add the MySQL driver into the KSQL server container. So we have one file called run sh where we basically do this. So the container for for Kafka for KSQL DB in here, we have the container here. It has a command which is run sh. So we're going to copy this file into the container of ksql db and we're going to run it inside the container so what this will do is it will install the jdbc connector with this command then it will install the redis connector with this command and finally it will copy the mysql connector uh, this is the driver of mysql it will copy it into the right folder so that the JDBC connector can use it. So I'm not going to explain a lot about JDBC or, or MySQL. I assume that you might know it, but if you don't know this, uh, JDBC is the standard that was created by Java to connect to uh, relational databases. So uh, the JDBC connector the, uh, that Confluent developed basically builds upon this. So they, they can connect to any relational database because they use under the hood JDBC. And because they use JDBC, we need to install the JDBC driver that is used to connect to MySQL. So every database has something called the JDBC driver. And this is what allows you as a Java developer to connect to the relational database. So for example, Postgres has its own driver, MySQL has its own driver, uh, SQL Server has its own driver and so on. And, and that's, that's why we need to install the MySQL driver here. In the KSQL DB server folder, we also have the KSQL server properties, which are very simple. We're just saying where is going to be running where is Kafka running? Where is the con uh, what are the Kafka Connect properties? And where is the uh, schema registry running? And then we also have the Connect properties. And the Connect properties here we have, this file has a lot of configurations that we're not going to go in depth right now, but the main thing is that we are configuring where Kafka is running, we're configuring the name of the cluster of the connect cluster and we're configuring the converters that we're going to use by default which we said is going to be avro so we're going to be using key avro and value converter also avro and where the schema registry is for these uh, converters so that's simple and then we also have in the ksql db cleave folder all the sql scripts that we're going to be running manually in our ksql db so that we can create the connectors all right so then we have mysql and in mysql we are going to have a database called football and inside this database we're going to have the table players and it's going to have 10 players already in it we created an init script here to add all the players that we want. So uh, here we create a schema and then we create 
the table players and we create we insert all these players into the table and if you look at the at, at the docker compose for mysql you'll see that we are adding um, these files mysql so files mysql folder here in the docker entry point init db so this will automatically run the init sql file and this will create the table so whenever the the database starts the the table will be already there and it will already have all those players all right so now we're ready to run our docker compose so i'm going to run it here in a terminal docker compose up this is going to be creating our docker containers with kafka ksql db uh, mysql and redis so let's wait for it to run okay it seems like everything has run so to make sure that it run what we can do is i'm going to connect to the database so i'm going to add here a mysql database this is a very cool feature of IntelliJ. Um, I think, yeah, this is the port because it's a default one. The user should be root and authentication is user and password. Password is root and database is football. So let's test the connection. and it works so let's create this connection here to select all from players and here we have all the players that we inserted into the database so the database is created and everything has worked as we expected so let's go on with our tutorial now we can create the connectors so I'm going to open a new terminal here and I'm going to connect to with this command here to ksql client and I'm going to open a new client. Okay. Okay, so now we have the ksql client running and we can do uh, show connectors and we'll see that there is no connector basically so we're going to create our first connector let's take a look at the code uh, this code here is how we create a connector with ksql basically we're going to create a source connector something that will connect from an external system into kafka and this connector is going to be called mysql source connector and this with is all the properties of the connector so these are all the properties of the connector here is going to be the connector class as we said we're going to be using jdbc source connector connection url so this is a jdbc connection url you might be familiar with it if you've used jdbc in the past basically we're saying use the mysql server in the network in the docker network and the database football then we have the user which is root we have the the password which is root as well and then we have the tables and for tables we're only using players the mode is in which mode we're going to run this connector because this connector has a lot of configurations and it's very flexible and it allows you for a lot of customization so this mode for example is going to create is going to create a new record into Kafka every time there is an increment in the ID column. That's because it's running in incrementing mode. But you can also run it in different modes like absurd and there are many other modes that will allow you to verify every time there is an update in the table, it will create a new record in Kafka. So for now we're going to be using this mode for this tutorial 
But if you go into the documentation of the JDBC source connector, it's going to have so many things that you can try. The topic prefix is something that you can, you can send as empty, or you can basically say, for example, you can put a, a, a prefix so that it tells you where it comes from. For example, you could say my MySQL. So it will put the MySQL prefix to everything. And finally, you have the key, uh, which is uh, which column is going to be the key in the topic. So in this case, we're going to be using the ID column, which is very natural in our case. So let's go ahead and create this connector. Remember, this connector will read the table and it will put the data into Kafka. So, creating the connector. And it says the message created connector MySQL source connect. So now I should be able to run show connectors. And as you can see here, we have our connector that was created. It's of type source. It uses this class and it's running. So this tells us that it's, it's it has not failed. It has one, uh, one task running. We can also verify that a new topic was created into Kafka. So show topics. And you see, we have the players topic now. And this topic was created because of this connector, because this connector has run and it has created a topic in Kafka. So now we're going to create the sync connector. And it, again, it has a similar syntax. Now we are going to tell it's a sync connector. So it's going to move data from Kafka into Redis. And it's going to have all these properties here. And what we're telling it is going to be using the Redis sync connector class, how many tasks, um, which topic should the data come from, which is a player's topic, where is Redis located, what is the key value converter and the value converter. So because we're saving data into Redis, we're going to be using byte array converter, which is a value that Redis can understand. And so we're using it for the key and for the value. All right, so let's create the connect. The, so, all right, so let's run this SQL script and let's create the connector. That was quick. Show connectors. And now we have two connectors, the MySQL one and the Redis. So the Redis one, it uses the Redis sync connector, which is what we want. And it's running, it has not failed. And this is really great. So how do we know that our data is effectively in Redis? We can check that by connecting to Redis. This command here is going to connect to our Redis container, and it will run this command, which is the Redis command line tool. So I'm running this. And now we're going to select the default database for Redis. And we're going to run this, which is get one. So get the value for the key one. And we expect something like this. So we have here some a lot of numbers and then we have Lionel Messi, Paris Saint-Germain, Argentinian. So basically, uh, we have saved data into Redis. The reason it looks like this is because basically this is an array of bytes. This is a bunch of bytes. And some of them we can make sense of because these are strings inside the byte but the rest of them we don't understand. But if we were to read this and convert it into Avro, then we could make sense of it. But the, the good thing is that we have saved the data into Redis. And now uh, we, can, we can try with different players. For example, get 
three and this is Neymar and get 10 Raheem Sterling so that's working all right that was extremely simple right have you ever imagined that it would be that simple to move data from MySQL into Redis it's it's really simple to do and you can transform this data using KSQL DB so imagine the power that you can have by using Kafka Connect and KSQL DB you can move data into Kafka then you can transform it with KSQL DB and then you can uh, put it into a different system uh, whatever you want and everything with a few KSQL commands it's extremely powerful we're going to keep working on this learning how we can modify this data how we can operate with it how we can join it with other data so I hope you have enjoyed this video if you have then subscribe to the channel comment let me know your thoughts and I'll be waiting for you in the next episode bye